Thank you very much. And I think I'm very pleased to be here. And um, thanks to Lydia's presentation. And I had the chance to also look at the report. I would, um, I'm, I'm quite, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm very happy to even see these things are coming up because this is something that pr from uh, UNHCR's refugee response, we would look at really prioritizing this. And I think it's, it's uh, the evidence-based aspect is very, very useful for us. It also helps us to look at our registration um, <coughs> capacity, but the scope of registration, how do we look at this particular specific group? Is it we include them within the broad vulnerable categories, or is it something that we need to look at in a very specific manner? I think, uh, I mean, for, uh, for us, we, we acknowledge the report itself, and we totally, uh, we are quite happy that HelpAge and Handicap together jointly are, uh, have, uh, are sharing this information at an interagency level. We also need to uh, sensitize the other sectors, how we can mainstream this <coughs> within their own interventions, because one is we would have to enhance the registration, um, the data collection at the registration level. I mean, just to, if I can give a, use a little bit of a, how do you say, the technical registration, how it mm -hmm. works out in an emergency. Mm -hmm. In the first, when there is a ma ma massive influx of refugees, which is the case in Jordan and Lebanon since 2012, July, um, we, the first level of registration does not capture all of it because there is a, uh, people come in large numbers. So we have to capture as quickly as ma as many as possible that they don't lose the opportunity to be registered. So the focus is quite on the regis to register them. But I think the value addition would be to enhance the registration capacity that they would be able to look at the specific need the specific needs. And I think there, I think we would really look at the value addition of the definitions itself. Impairment, that is something that we have not really extensively used, but vulnerability or uh, person with uh, disabilities. I don't know, I think it's a little bit of, we need to really have that aspect which will help us and the registration colleagues to, uh, to have that basic understanding, I think. And that we acknowledge. When we were looking at the report, I think yesterday and the day before, we, we really had the chance to look at it, uh, the, uh, the positive side of it, but also what we can enhance to, to look at some of the recommendations to engage the, to engage the national actors to engage the community also. I think that's something that we have to also look at. What are the other ways and tools to identify, to, to strengthen identification? And that's quite a gap in uh, most emergencies and post-emergencies. Considering this crisis in Syria, I'm, I'm coming from a very field perspective. So if uh, you can stop me in between, if you have a very uh, critical question, just uh, stop me. Um, I think uh, this, uh, crisis for the last two years has been quite uh, dynamic and it has taken a lot of uh, um, lot of actors were on ground and a lot of uh, assessments have been carried out but evidence-based assessments are very much uh, required at this point now we have to step back and look at some of these issues thematic issues but also what are the inter linkages what are the connecting points because we everybody more or less does assessment on vulnerable groups how much do they include person with disabilities and older persons? I haven't really seen that a lot coming in. And I think mm -hmm. it's time to harmonize this, bring this together to look at what are the, what are the, how do we improve uh, identification? But what is the response that we can develop? I think that has to go together. Because so when it comes to prioritizing in response, this category perhaps is not uh, really talked about. And I'm quite telling from, our own experience, but also uh, when we do the program and the RRP6, which was the re regional response planning to attend to the Syrian crisis. And there were discussions that how we could mainstream, uh, you know, inclusiving, inclusiveness of age and disability within the all the programs or interventions in an emergency response. Maybe this report will take it forward, you know, some of the recommendations that you have shared, I can see that is engaging with the governments, for example, the national what is the national policy to respond to this? If it's a long-term crisis, we don't know how it's going to end, how it's going to develop. If it's two years, three years, four years, how, how they would be receiving this support. Some would need uh, medical support, some would need psychosocial, but what about funding resources? I think we have to look at responding. I mean, I don't know. Um, we would really look at this uh, much broader than just uh, individual case management. I see that has been a focus in the immediate 
in the in the crisis we saw a lot of attention on individual cases case managements but i think we have to look at now there would be much more people and the challenge is in the urban non camp settings one is the camps and one is the non camps see uh, the person with disabilities and older persons the communities capacity to respond agencies expertise to respond in a camp is very different in the non camp settings even to that extent identification considering they are very they are spread all over the country and it's very difficult to reach to them but it's very difficult for them to reach us mm -hmm often we don't reach we don't uh, i mean accessible we, we have done i think handicap and helpage have done excellent accessibility assessments that has really helped us to look at this closely and to 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 um, to include in our community outreach activities how do we use this to identify person with specific needs because whenever we try to access them it's very difficult but also they they are often left out from lot of services that is uh, provided to the rest of the population mm -hmm. so how do we uh, harmonize services for this population these are some of i mean i gave a little bit of a, of a, a bit of everything but uh, basically i mean for from units here i think lebanon or jordan i mean I'm, my colleagues would have been happy to join from lebanon they have uh, we really i mean we really recognize the strength of this report that has uh, been brought about and uh, we also will look at how do we draw in the strengths of the specialized agency sometimes we don't have that because we at at third level of registration we will try to capture more and more some of this information and we would really like to look at the definitions but also the categories because we have a uh, person with specific needs vulnerability codes which is in registration they apply but perhaps that needs you know as you said capacity building training it needs even the level of understanding to 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 disability and impairment and that's something i think i find it quite interesting i mean how do we um how do we ensure the understanding on disability and impairment is quite it's very technical so at the registration level how feasible it is to include all of this i'm sure it would need more and more discussion i mean that's a little bit of yeah, yeah? yes <laughs> unless you have a question i will be happy to take yeah. and i'll also share some good practice that is being done in jordan maybe later i'll be happy to share brilliant yeah. thank you Rishi, thank you very much. I mean, what we're getting there, I think, is a, a strong recognition from the field of many of the problems that you have identified in your research, uh, and also a strong recognition yes. that the capacity of U UNHCR needs to be strengthened to be able to um, accommodate the needs that, uh, that Lydia was sp speaking about earlier. So <laughs> um, that's very helpful. From, from research to the field, now I think we're going to go to donors.